Hi everyone, welcome to Dialysis Nurses Supporting Nurses, and today we're going to talk about the top three questions I get from dialysis patients, their family members, new nurses, techs, social workers, from everybody. These are my top three questions. Number one is why does the blood pressure drop during dialysis? Number two is what happens if I miss dialysis? And number three, what is my fluid restriction between dialysis? And it's a lot to remember. Like I can talk and talk and talk, but I'm, I learn when I see things. So today I am going to show you some of the visual aids that I've made to help you with these questions. They are at my Etsy shop. The link is in the description, but let's do a little screen sharing and look at these super cute patient education, staff education handouts. They are in black and white and they are in color. And if you don't like some of the things that I put on there where they're like, mm, Lindsay, that's not quite right. I would change this. Well, guess what? You can change it. You can change it. This is great news. There is a link to the template on Canva where you can make changes. Here we are. Here are the PDFs that I made especially for you, for your clinic, for your patients, for your family members, for your new dialysis nurses. Top three questions. Let's, let's dive into number one. Why does the person's blood pressure drop while they are on dialysis? Number one reason, fluid removal or ultrafiltration. We get, put the person on the machine, we try to get their extra fluid off of them, we either move too much or we go too fast, and that's gonna cause their blood pressure to drop. But why, Lindsay? Why does it cause the blood pressure to drop? Your, the dialysis removes fluid from the blood. Great, that's what we want, but then it also lowers blood volume. Okay, lower blood volume means lower pressure in the blood. Okay, so we've got, this is a blood vessel, obviously, and it's full of blood, and dialysis is going to start removing fluid, removing fluid from the blood. So now we have less blood volume, and now like a fire hose, we have less pressure. That's kind of what happens there. Usually the body will bring in fluid from their lungs, from their edema, from other places into the blood vessels to help keep the blood pressure up, but sometimes we remove too fast or they don't have it, and that's going to cause the blood pressure to drop. Number two, love this one, medications. Medications can work too well, or maybe they don't need as many blood pressure medications as they used to now that they're on dialysis and they have less fluid buildup. So if you notice somebody that's having low blood pressures, but you have fluid to remove, what is the reason? One of them could be their medications. So talk to the provider and which medications can they skip on dialysis days? Which ones maybe they don't need anymore? Or which ones should they take after dialysis? And that is not for me as the nurse to decide. That is something that needs to come from a provider as an order. This is what the, uh, the patient should be doing on these days. Number three, eating during dialysis. I see this more in the hospital than I do at the clinic. Some clinic clinics will not let people eat on dialysis. Other people will bring in light snacks, but sometimes you will have nurses be like, oh, hey, Lindsay, I've got so-and-so's lunch. Can I, can I bring it into them when it comes? And I'll be like, it depends on the patient. Of course, you know, I always say it depends. It depends. You know, there's no hard, fast rules, but it depends. If I have somebody that I'm trying to remove a lot of fluid on and their blood pressure is already soft, I'm not going to let them eat. Now we know why, because it's going to drop their blood pressure. They're eating or I'm eating and the blood goes to my GI tract, to my digestion. And then on dialysis, I have 300 mils of blood outside of my body getting cleaned with fluid removal. So I've got blood in my stomach. I've got blood outside of the system. And now I don't have any blood to keep my blood pressure up, right? I need blood to keep, I need blood volume to keep my blood pressure up. So if I can get rid of the food to help keep the blood pressure up so I can remove fluid, I gotta do it. There's exceptions, again, to every rule, but in general, if you have somebody with a low blood pressure, especially if you have a crit line, you'll see them eat and that crit line will drop. It's something to watch if you have a crit line. You've probably seen that before. Next, kind of uh, hinted at this with the medication, low heart function, heart failure, or weak vessels are, is going to cause low blood pressure. Sometimes they just have low blood pressure to start. They are off their all, all their blood pressure medications, so we ruled that one out, and they still are having low blood pressures. These patients usually get started on metadrin, and the hospital, they'll get albumin to help pull that fluid, but that low, their heart has just gotten weaker. It is weaker, and I try to remove fluid, and it just, it just cannot keep the blood pressure up, or the blood vessels just are not reacting, where they're like this, 
and then I remove the we remove the blood volume the fluid on dialysis so there's less blood volume in there so the blood vessels should get closer together to keep that blood pressure up but instead it's just like a little kind of like eh, I don't know it doesn't work as fast as it did before blood pressure is going to drop oh top five we kind of talked about this too so they all I have one through five but they're all very intertwined making it complicated but we're going to keep it simple we're keeping it simple number five the fifth reason top five reasons why a blood person's blood pressure will drop on dialysis is they are already they're dry they're already at their target weight so if I'm trying to remove fluid that they don't have they're going to lose blood volume and their blood pressure is going to drop yes a lot of this has to do with low blood volume, making our blood pressure drop. So there is a, a theme there that kind of intertwines all these things. So now what does low blood pressure feel like besides just passing out? It can feel dizzy or nauseous. If you have somebody that you're trying to remove fluid on and they're getting dizzy or nauseous, get that blood pressure, stop removing fluid until you can assess them further. Muscle cramping, that is a pre precursor not everybody cramps before their blood pressure drops but if they're cramping I'm running over there and I'm like stop removing fluid get a blood pressure manage their cramping because after cramping comes passing out pale or sweaty sounds like like blood sugar problems probably have to check on both if you have somebody that is pale or sweaty get their blood sugar get their blood pressure find out which one is causing it could be both fainting, passing out. That's the one where you are like, okay, don't panic. Lay them flat. Give them fluid back. Wake them up. Just wake them up. If they're passing out during dialysis, it's generally because of too much fluid removal. But if that is not fixing it, get them out of there. Call 911. This would look cute on the fridge, right? This would be awesome. Monthly education topic. You can hand this out to them. It could be on a poster board in your dialysis clinic. It can go in your resource binder for new dialysis nurses. Black and white, very important because I don't have a color printer. So black and white, cool. Next, number two question. Oops, let's try this again. What happens if you miss dialysis? I get this question a lot and there always seems to be a holiday coming. Another holiday, you mean I have to come in on the 4th of July, I have to come in Memorial Day, Christmas, like do I ever get a day off? No, you don't. Dialysis is a life-saving procedure. So what happens if you miss this life-saving procedure? Number one, fluid and waste are gonna build up. You're not gonna start holding on to fluid, holding on to waste, and that doesn't, that's like, okay, I'm, big whoop Lindsay I don't, I don't care I can make that up on the next dialysis treatment maybe it's not one two three it's not like this is what happens on day one this is what happens on day two you get shorter breath and fatigue and then number three is when you have serious symptoms these can all happen very quickly very quickly you could jump to number three without even having shortness of breath all right so missing dialysis is a big deal it is such a big deal fluid and waste build up now what happens with fluid and waste Shortness of breath, swelling, fatigue from all that fluid and waste products. More serious symptoms, confusion, that's from the waste products building up. The BUN, urea, creatinine, chest pain, electrolyte abnormalities, specifically potassium. All right, and these things will happen quickly. Hospital stay. You start having these symptoms, you're going to end up in the hospital. And you're, you're probably going to be there for a little bit to get that fluid off, normalize electrolytes. But... Not everybody is going to make it to the hospital if they miss dialysis. Sudden death is what can happen to you if you miss dialysis. I have seen it before. Dialysis Friday, skip Monday, want to make it up on Tuesday or Wednesday. They never make it because they die suddenly from missing dialysis. And again, you know, I want to be so like light and bubbly and happy and just like dialysis is so great and fun. But missing dialysis is a big deal and people don't know what they don't know. They might see other people miss dialysis or they might have missed dialysis before and everything was fine, but they got lucky. It is a very risky thing. So people need to know this is what happens if you miss dialysis. This is a risk that you are taking. Some people it's worth the risk, but most people, once we really get this point across, like you, you, you got to have three dialysis treatments a week, you got to get here. What happens if, if I miss dialysis? What happens if it's Monday morning, I forget to set my alarm, and I oversleep? Can I just come to dialysis on Tuesday? Maybe. 
we'd prefer it if you came on Monday. Call your dialysis clinic right away. The number, you can write the number right there at the bottom. You see it, save it in your phone, call it right away. And if I'm being honest, they've probably already tried to call you like 10 times because they're worried that you're dead. That is what they're worried about. They are like, oh my God, it's, they've got to get here today. Call and we will fit you in later that day. Call, don't just be like, oh, I'll try them tomorrow. Call them, it is a big deal. If there is something going on in your life that keeps your quality of life, a wedding, uh, something like you like to do every Wednesday night with your friends, a coffee clutch, whatever it is, we'll make it work. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. We can, Saturdays are busy in the summer. Weddings, I can't think of what else happens in the summer. I, I don't know. Talk to us about it. We will reschedule you versus just being like, I don't care, I'm just gonna miss it. What happens if you miss dialysis? Big deal. Black and white. Again, these would be great for a resource binder, monthly education for patients, can go in their binder that you give them with new dialysis. This is a lot to remember. New dialysis patients have a lot to remember. Even all types of dialysis patients, whether they're brand new or have been doing it for years, it's a lot to remember. It took me a year to get comfortable and I'm still uncomfortable sometimes and I don't know everything. Visuals help me remember how important it is to teach people on dialysis about these things. So I really hope you like them. Again, there's something on here where you're like, mm, Lindsay, I don't quite like that. I don't, I don't like how that looks. I, I would change this. I won't take it personal because I am giving you a link to the template where you can change it. You can make it more personalized. You can like put your dialysis clinic info on there or slogan or watermark or whatever it's called. You can put that on there. Do whatever you want with it. Absolutely. Make a thousand copies of this. Just need to buy it once and it's yours forever. Cute. Next, fluid limits between dialysis. This is in general 32 ounces or one liter in general, but everybody might have a slightly different fluid restriction. Depends on how much urine they make, if they're an HD or PD, but this you can make personalized too. This is just in general, but these are important things to know for everybody, like what counts as fluid? Soup doesn't count, it's soup. And jello doesn't count, because it's jello, but whatever melts at room temp. And to be honest, I didn't know that jello melted at room temp, but it counts as a liquid, right? It's on the clear liquid diet, so it's a liquid, even though it's a jello. Jello counts, popsicles, soda, ice chips, water, coffee, tea, anything that's liquid at room temperature counts. Even if you say it doesn't count, it's gonna count when you get on the scale. General fluid limit. I got a little ahead of myself, but here we are. 32 ounces, one liter. Great, Lindsay, 32 ounces, 32 ounces, 32 ounces. What does that mean? What does that look like? What is 32 ounces? What is one liter? Talking about common items that are 32 ounces. One large McDonald's soda cup is 32 ounces. One Nalgene water bottle classic size is 32 ounces. Two 16 ounce water bottles. Four measuring cups. Four one cup of liquid. So one cup equals eight ounces. Okay, now I already have a better idea of what 32 ounces is. I really like the Nalgene one. I really encourage you to measure, measure. 32 ounces, one liter. In general, one liter a day. So on Monday, I have one liter. On Tuesday, I have one liter. So that's two liters. So when I come from dialysis Monday to Wednesday, I'll gain two kilograms. One kilogram equals one liter in, in general. So that is a realistic goal of fluid to remove in dialysis, depending on your size. We have some people that are like 50 kilograms, that it's their fluid restriction is gonna be a little less because our max fluid removal is going to be a little less. So keep that in mind. I also have a max UFR calculator study guide on Etsy too. Please check that out and it's a worksheet. And again, print those off, share them with whoever you want. I just, I really enjoyed making them and I am excited to share them with you. And now, why, why does fluid matter so much? Why can't I just drink all the fluid I want, all of the ice chips, all of the coffee I want, and then come to dialysis and you just take it off? Why? Why? There's a few reasons. High blood pressure. What, whatever fluid I drink, it's gonna stay in me. If I don't urinate it out, urinate it out, it's gotta stay somewhere. It's gonna go to the lungs, it's gonna go to edema, you're gonna get shortness of breath, but it's also going in the blood vessels. So now you have more fluid in your blood vessels and there's more pressure there. 
like a fire hose that is full of water. There's more pressure. So more pressure going to your brain, going to your kidneys, going to your heart. That is hard on your body. So minimizing that fluid intake is going to help keep your blood pressure safe. Blood pressure pills aren't the answer to everything. Okay, fluid restriction is a big part of success on dialysis. All right, again, high blood pressure for more fluid, trouble breathing because the fluid's going to my lungs. Some people, that's where they hold their fluid is in their lungs. They come in on Monday or Tuesday huffing and puffing. Great opportunity to talk about fluid restrictions. Heart strain, right? High blood pressure hits the brain, hits the heart. And plus, if you think of the heart like a balloon, normal sized balloon, fill it up with air, gets nice and big, and then you let the air out, it shrinks again, but it's not the same size as it was before. Same with the heart. Fill it up with water, high fluid gains, the heart is stretching out, remove the fluid, shrinks again, but not to the normal size. So now you are getting a weaker heart. Your heart is stretching out and you're getting into heart failure. Long-term effects of high fluid gain. Also, emergency hospital visit, trouble breathing, heart strain, I can't breathe, I'm having chest pain, it feels like I'm gonna die. I'm going to the hospital. Emergency hospital, like trouble breathing is uncomfortable. Not being able to breathe is a very scary thing. I'm going to the hospital if I can't breathe. Same with somebody who has had too much fluid between dialysis. They can't breathe, they're going to the hospital, we're doing emergency dialysis. Because it's an emergency. Big deal, why fluid matters. Helpful tips. Love this, use a measuring cup for drinks. Might sound silly, just you'll, you'll get used to it. You will get used to it. Or we all have those jugs that you get at the hospital that are marked with 500 mils. Fill that up, tally it, use that during the day. Ice chips or frozen grapes, that's really gonna help with dry mouth. Mm-hmm, gum, lemon drops, sugar-free candies. And track your intake with a fluid journal or an app. There are apps out there where you can track your fluid and it is simple and it is easy. And then you get to share that with your dietitian and your nurses and your providers. And they will be like, wow keep doing that. How do I get everybody else to do it? And then my fluid restriction is. Fluid restriction is very personal. Print it out. Again, put it in your binder. New nurses, charge nurses, new patient binder. Post it in your waiting room. There are so many things that you can do with it and you can edit it. That is right there. Top three things. Top three questions that I get at the dialysis clinic all put into three simple visuals, black and white in color. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.